This is the 14th video in the scripting series, and today I'm going to be covering module scripts. This is what the default module script looks like when you insert it in Roblox Studio. As you can see at the top, we have an empty table called module, and then we return module. Before we get too deep into the code, let me explain what a module script is in the first place and how you might want to use it. So a module script is a Lewis source container that runs once and must return exactly one value. So what is a Lewis source container? A Lua source container is just the base class for all objects which contain Lua code for Roblox. So that's a script, local script, module script, and also a core script. You can ignore the core script, but you should remember a script in local script and module script. So a script runs server code, local script runs client code, and a module script, well, a module script actually doesn't run any code at all. It just contains code that can be used in scripts and local scripts. The big reason that you'll probably want to end up using module scripts in your games is to adhere to the don't repeat yourself principle or the drive principle, which basically just says that when you write a function or some piece of code, you should continue to reuse that piece of code rather than rewriting it. So here's a little diagram to show what that means. So here we have a module script in the center and there's three separate instances of where we're using that code. So these could be three different scripts that all use code written inside of the module script. If we didn't have this module script, we'd have to rewrite the functions in this script, in this script, and in this script. And that would waste a lot of time, and then if you make a change to that code, you'd have to update it in three separate instances. So this makes it a lot easier to maintain and organize code. I have a few key points that you need to take note of. So first, you should understand that module scripts don't run by themselves. A script or local script needs to require the module script for it to run and it will only run once in each environment. So it will run once on the server and then once per client. Again, only if it was required by the server or client. So if the server required it and the clients didn't, it would run only once on the server and then not on the clients at all. If it was required on the clients, it would also run on the clients, but again, only once per client. And then next, the return statement needs to be the last thing in the module script. Anything after that will not run. Okay, so the last thing needs to be the return statement. Then also module scripts can return anything. You can return a number, a string, a function, or a table. So they can return anything, but they're usually used to return tables. Now let's get into an example and I'll show you how to use module scripts. If you haven't seen my previous videos, especially my videos on tables and functions, I suggest you watch those first unless you already have a good understanding of them because they will be important for you to be able to understand what we're gonna be doing with module scripts. In this case, I put the module script in replicated storage because we're gonna be accessing the module script from both the server and the client. I'm gonna rename the module script example module. Now let's create a very basic module script. I'm just gonna create one function. So we're gonna type function module dot and then we're going to do print local player all right and in order to do this we're just going to do um, print game dot players dot local player all right so here's a very basic example module script right here and as i said before module scripts don't actually run any code so if we were to play the game this code right here would never execute so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a local script. So I'm gonna to go to starter player, starter player scripts, insert a local script. And then here is where we're gonna to need to access the example module script. Our example module script is in replicated storage. So in order to access it, we'll need to get a reference to replicated storage. And we'll do that by just uh, typing local replicated storage equals game, get service, replicated storage, and then what we need to do is require the module script. So we'll type local, and then here we can name our module script, whatever we want. So for consistency, we'll just name it example module, and then we'll type require, and then this is where we put where the module script is. So we have to require the module script, it's in replicated storage, and then since this is a local script, we're going to want to wait for the child, which would be our module script, so if we look over here, it's called example module. So we're going to wait for example module. And just like that, we have access to our module script. 
So we have access to everything that we see here, or more specifically, since we're returning this module, we have access to the module table. And we have this function in the module table. So that means we can use this function print local player. So if we go back over here, we can type example module dot and then print local player. And here, if we run the game, we will actually see my player's name printed. And I'm going to explain everything in more detail in just a second. But let's just see how this works and how this runs. So I'll play the game. And as you can see down here in the output, Samuel was printed. So if I click on this, you'll see it takes us to the source of where that was printed. And it was printed with this function right here. Now, keep in mind that since this was a module script, this code was run once. So we created a table. So actually right here where I required it. Because I required this module script, the code in here was then run afterward. Uh, so we created a table called module at, and this function print local player returned it. So then this module right here was returned into this local script into example module. And then I was able to use that function. All right, now let me go back and explain to you what just happened. Here is our module script and we're creating a table and then adding a function and then returning it. So in a module script, you can actually return whatever you want. Most of the, most of the time you'll see people using tables, um, but you could technically actually just return a number here, return one, uh, return some other variable, some function, but they're most useful uh, when you're returning a table. So, in this case, I'm just going to return a table. And when you create a module script, as I said before, it's never run until you require it. So there's always at least two parts for module scripts. There's where you create the module script, and then there's either a local script or a script where you're actually requiring it and using it. So what does this require function do right here? That require function just runs the supplied module script if it hasn't been run already, and then it returns what the module script returned in both cases. So no matter what, you're, you're going to get back what the module script is returning. But if that module script hasn't been run before, so if it's the first time that you're requiring a module script, then it will run it. So as you can see, we have this global function require. Um, and as you can see, it's in Roblox globals in the API. But we have this global function require takes a module script, and it will return whatever you're returning in the module script. In our case, we're returning module, which is a table that contains one function, the function print local player. So here in the local script, where we're requiring it, as you can see, we have these require function, we're getting a module script. So we're requiring this module script, and then it returns whatever the module script returns. So since we're returning this module table, we're returning this function here will return that module table into this variable example module. So after we require this here, it will get this module that we've created. And then after that, we can use whatever functions or variables that that table might have. If we did do something else, such as change this just to some number, change it to one, uh, then what we'd have right here, this wouldn't work because now we're just returning one. If we did print example module with uh, parentheses, of course, this would just print one. So I'll run that. And as you can see, one was printed. One was printed because we returned one. And when, so when we required this, one was returned into example module and therefore one was printed. Now I'm going to demonstrate how module scripts only execute once per environment and how to add variables, including private variables and functions. Because this is a table, you can add variables just like you'd add another key to a table. So if we type module dot num equals zero, we've added a variable num into this table, which can be used wherever we require this module. Also, something else I should have said before maybe is that the name of the table we're using doesn't matter. So we can name it example as long as we copy and paste this everywhere else. I'll just keep it module for now though. So this right here, as I said, can be used anywhere we're requiring this module. And another function I've 
already written, I'm just gonna paste in, is this add number function. All it does is print module.num and then it adds one to it. So the first time this runs, this will be zero. Second time it'll be one because we've added one and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna use this to demonstrate the module scripts only run once per environment. So I'm going to copy this and throw this in the local script right here. And then what I'm gonna do, so right here it's actually called example module here. So I'm gonna change that. So if I run this right now, we'd see zero printed. Then if I do this, so we see some delay here, I'll do a three second delay, and then I'll do the same thing. So the first time this will be zero, second time it'll be one. But to make this more interesting, we're going to create a script and then I'm going to actually just copy and paste what I have here basically. So I'll copy this, replace this. Don't need all of this stuff here. So I'm only going to run this once though on the, the server here. So I'm gonna run the game. And as you can see down here, zero is printed on the server and then zero was printed again on the client. And then after three seconds, one was printed. So if I click this, you can see here, zero is printed on the server it says down here on the server, and then zero was printed on the client. So as you can see, that demonstrates that these module scripts only run once per environment. So it ran once on the server, once on the client. And then since I did this, called this function again, uh, that zero was updated to a one. You might create some variables or functions that you don't think are required to be shared outside of this module script. So in order to actually do that and keep them from being shared, when you require this in another script, all you need to do is not add it to the table. So if you create a variable normally, such as this local private var, and set it equal to whatever you want, this cannot be accessed outside of the script. You could do the same with the function, some function with uh, you know some name. This you can print something with this. Um, this will not be shared outside of the script. Now I'm going to go over a quick example of a use case for the module script that I found on the developer hub. This is the article that I found and it covers an intro to module scripts. It talks about a money manager. So this is a variation of the module script that they had. I just added a little bit of code, not much. So I have a function here that gives money to the player. It gives amount money to this player. And then this checks the balance of player. So this right here is the table for the module script. This is just an internal table that I'm using to check different players balances. So the use case for this money manager module script would be using the module script in multiple different scripts that might require different functions to either check a player's balance or change a player's balance. So here I just have a script that is getting the money manager. As you can see, it's requiring the money manager that I'm storing in replicated storage and I'm just gonna wait five seconds. Uh, again, this shouldn't necessarily be replicated. I'm just doing this as an example. So I'm gonna wait five seconds. I'm gonna get my balance, and it should be zero to start off. I'm gonna give myself $100. Wait two seconds, give myself another 100, and then I'm going to print my balance. So we should see zero printed here, and then 200 printed here. As you can see, there's nothing yet, and then I have zero is printed, and then we have 200 printed. The great thing about having this in a module script is that I can require the money manager wherever I'm going to manage money. Then I don't have to rewrite these get balance functions or give money functions. All I need to do is require it and then use it. As always, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you wanna see more in the future. Like the video if it helped you out. Comment down below if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next one.